burnt. Have you ever been told if you play with fire, you'll get burned? Well, my dad told me a story about four curious boys, a creek, and a, fi a five-gallon bucket of gas, and a match. Now you can only imagine what happened. And yes, it did. It's a true story. Luckily, no one got hurt except some pride. I believe this story relates to our lives and sin. If you play with sin, eventually you will get burned. John 15, 4 through 6 in the King James Version encourages us to abide in Him. We either are continuing to grow in our relationship with Christ or away from Christ. If we continue away from Christ, we are living in sin. Matthew 7, 23 gives us the consequence of the latter. Depart from me, for I never knew you. How devastating that would be. Throughout the New Testament, including the book of John, Jesus shares his passion that all would come to abide in him and not be lost in their sin. Sin is separation from God, which leads to spiritual death and hell. This brings me to my first point, the reality of hell. In today's society, we hear people avoiding this topic, as it can be controversial. I have actually heard the Christians say, let's not preach on this topic, because people need to hear about God's love and mercy. Call me old-fashioned if you like, but I get riled up when I hear this. I mean, I agree that people will need to hear about God's love and mercy and forgiveness, but we cannot neglect the whole purpose of why Jesus Christ was sent from God the Father here on the earth to die on the cross for our sins. If there was not a punishment for sin, if there was not a hell, then what would we need a Savior for? What would have been Christ's purpose for dying on the cross for us? Revelation chapter 20 tells us that hell is a real place, and real people will go there if they're not in the right relationship with God. Isn't it the right of every human being to know of the reality of hell? It is important that we do not leave this out in our messages. But if we are preaching on the reality of hell, we should also preach that there is an alternative. The reality of heaven. Heaven is a reward for remaining true to God. Not only do we get to experience a relationship with Him here on earth, but we also get to spend eternity with Him. Why is heaven so wonderful? We are not only in the presence of God, but the Bible gives us more details about heaven. How many of you have ever been scared, lonely, afraid? How wonderful to be in the very presence of God in which all those feelings will disappear. How many of you have ever been hurt? Known someone with an incurable de disease like cancer or MS? How awesome it will be in heaven where there will be no sin, no pain, and no sorrow. How important is share this hope with all of humanity? And all of this seems so overwhelming, amazing, and yet impossible because of, because of how our world is bombarded with evil, diseases, and crime. And yet, it is reality. Among the reality of hell and the reality of heaven, there's the reality of our choice. Everyone loves a choice. I know I do. Just as my father did when he struck the match. <laughs> No matter, how, no matter how old we are, no matter what country we were born in, or the culture we were raised in, we like choices, because it gives us a sense of control. I believe it is a part of our human right to be given a choice when faced with the reality of eternity. I presented to you biblical evidence that there is a real hell, and a real heaven. What are you going to do about this? We each have a choice to make. Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life to Jesus Christ our Lord. John 3.16 says, That God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. There are two choices laid out before you. Death and hell or eternal life in heaven. I cannot make this choice for you, but I can encourage you to make the choice for eternal life in heaven. Though it is a choice that you will live with for eternity, making this choice is actually quite simple. The Bible says in Romans 3.23 that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And 1 John 1.9 says 
that if we confess our sins and ask God to forgive us of our sin, He will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Right. In Romans 10, 9, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that Christ raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. Which choice are you going to make? Mm 